Hola, Barcelona. Yes, I know it's late, but please, some more. <laughs> Hola, JBCN. Hola. Muchas gracias. Okay, so now we'll continue in English. Um, yeah, this talk was a bit last minute for you, last minute for me too. So, yeah, I'm replacing a colleague that got ill, and he's also, I consider him my friend, so I hope I will be a good replacement. So today, I want to talk about, actually about me, so I hope it's not too boring, <laughs> right? Uh, and the reason is, um, there has been two big things in my life recently that completely changed my life. The one thing you can see here, right, my baby boy, my son was born last year, end of November. It's probably the best thing in my life. And um, also, about the same time, Red Hat approached me and offered me a job as uh, Director of Customer Experience. And so, yeah, now my life has changed completely. I don't sleep much. I travel a lot. It's awesome. And so I thought it's a good time to share a few experiences with you. The good, the bad, the ugly. Like, my learnings mostly, like, obviously in my career I had a lot of failures. And I think from the failures we can learn the most. So, let's see. When I started out and I studied computer science, my professors told me, well, you start with some programming language. In my case, that some programming language was Java. And yeah, you work on mastering that language. And as soon as you have mastered that, you just continue with the next language and the next language and you go from there, right? And I was always very passionate and hardworking. I always wanted to like have a great success. So I thought, Okay, sounds reasonable, and well, how long can that mastering Java take me? Maybe a year, so let's push it. So I was working like day and night, even on the weekends, I was really working hard. I was really fully focusing on Java, but I made a few mistakes. I was like just fully focused on that goal. I didn't really look left and right. Maybe I was a bit like in a tunnel, so I was fully focused on this goal to achieve, to master Java. Well, now, many, many years later, I have still not mastered Java. I don't know how much I know of Java because there's just so much. Maybe 10%, maybe 30%, but I'm far from having mastered it. But at the time, obviously, I didn't know that. And this was pushing me. And I was working so hard. And with the big effort that I was pushing into my work, into my career, <clears throat> yes, I was a successful programmer soon, but I was not as successful as I wish I, uh, as I wanted to be. And sooner or later, I started to kind of destroy my health. I got like I gained a lot of fat. I didn't sleep well. I was always stressed, always pushing, always running, <laughs> never on time, always pushing it, and. I was probably also not the best colleague to work with because with all the stress I was putting on myself, like I could easily get like angry and give a not so nice answer. And this is probably one of the reasons also why I didn't like really skyrocket, right? Because actually this is, uh, there's more than just Java, right? But at the time I was in this tunnel and I didn't realize this. But after a while, I mean, my health was really, really bad. When I was just walking up some stairs, I was really out of breath, like, <laughs> by just slowly walking up some stairs. And I was really seeing that the way I was following was really not it, was not making me happy, was actually making me sad. So I knew I had to change something, right? So I was taking a, a moment, sitting down, reflecting my life, reflecting my steps, and seeing like, what am I actually doing at the moment and what can I change? And I realized I was putting in an effort of, let's say, 130%, but I was receiving only, let's say, 80%, right? And I was even reading about this matter at the, end of the time and found out this is like also some kind of magic numbers, this 80%. And I realized it might make more sense to actually just spend 80%, and from then on, this is what I did. And I was then more focusing on balancing my life. I was 
And the funny thing is with this 80%, I was actually achieving way more than with the 130% before because I was now more, much more open. I was a much more friendly, nicer person to work with. And I saw that I'm on the right way, right? And now this also opened new time for me, new possibilities to me. My mind was opening up. So I was starting to look left and right and things slowly started to change. I was starting to read things and not only about programming, also for example, there is a great book that I can recommend you from, I think he's called Carnegie, Dave Carnegie. This is a book I think even 100 years old or even older, How to Make Friends and Influence People, really highly recommended. So I really figured out that social skills, for example, is really important to master. I started also to go out, to go to meetups, to listen to meetups. I started to speak at meetups. I started my own website. And this was um, really fun for me and was encouraging me to do more. And so I also started a YouTube channel. This YouTube channel got noticed by um, various people in the Java um, universe, for example, Bruno Sousa who then invited me to join him uh, to do the Code for Life tour. And this like, introduced me to many people. This made me learn a lot of new things. And at about the same time, I was also invited by Heinz Kabutz, Java champion, to attend the very famous uh, unconference JCreed. Another big step in my life, in my career. I met many more people. I started to get invited to really big conferences. And sooner or later, it just exploded. I got more and more followers on social media. And yeah, so today, I think I have over all social media channels, I have about 70,000 followers. And uh, yeah, this is also probably how I got the job working for Red Hat. So now I'm traveling the world as a paid speaker. This is awesome. So now let's see how you can maybe learn a few things from that. And uh, also, um, maybe have a few findings from that. So how can you become successful? The first and most important point is act. And when I say that, I mean, the word doesn't really say what I mean here. Because I, if you just read act, right, you're sitting there, act, yeah, sure. But I mean, I really mean that. And I gave this talk at Tech Nation, and I said, you know, act means right now. You could, for example, if you want to become a speaker today, write your first abstract sent this to some conferences, and in a few months' time, you will stand here and do your own talk, right? That means act, to really do it. And one of the, the, the people in this talk listened, so, and he then directly uh, started to write an abstract, and now I'm mentoring him, and I hope this will really be a big success, and I would also invite you to act today, write an abstract, and you can really make it. Okay, but to balance this, you should also not force it, right? This is a big mistake that I made with sometimes being too over-motivated. I had this tendency to force it, right? This is like compared to if you want to look for a partner, you're alone, you want to find a partner, and then we're really sometimes forcing it, right? And I think that's not really sexy, that's not really getting you success. And that's the same thing here. If we're forcing it, right, then we're entering this tunnel, then we're not seeing everything right. So relax. Still take your time. I mean, this is the balance. We have to, on the one hand, push it, but just not too much. 80% might be enough, right? Okay. And in the same line, done is better than perfect, right? I mean, on the one hand, perfectionism is great. It uh, will help us to create awesome content. But still, done is better than perfect. As I said, I was jumping in here to do this talk, so maybe my talk is not the best talk in the world, okay. But I'm here, I'm doing this talk, and done is better than perfect, right? Very, very important, was a big learning for myself. And another thing is, we have to focus a lot on marketing. We as developers, we always, you know, we want to just focus on code, 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 code. But marketing is actually so important. Marketing is important if you want to start your own company. Marketing is also important if you want to run your own self, man or woman uh, uh, career, for example, as a speaker, right? So 
work on your marketing. Um, create an awesome website. Really put some effort into that. Look like how you dress yourself. All this makes a difference. I mean, for example, I mean, I can't change that. I have hardly any hair, okay? <laughs> Bad luck for me. But at least before I went to this conference, I went to a hairdresser so that, you know, I look okay-ish. <laughs> this is also part of self-marketing, yeah. And then to balance things, as I said before, we have to work out. I hear many people saying, oh, I don't have time to work out because I have to do this, 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 and that. And just this one hour per week or, you know, I don't have. Well, actually, the opposite is true. The one hour you spend working out is not an hour lost, it's an hour gained. And I experienced that firsthand. Because sometimes we're so tired, and when I say workout, obviously I'm in the whole balance. This could be yoga for you, or you also need a lot of sleep. People would ask me today, like, do you actually sleep? Yes, I sleep, if my boy lets me. <laughs> That's another thing, right? But I sleep as much as possible because we need sleep, we need to work out, and these are hours gained. Because you will be more productive, you will be more effective, and so you can reach way more and you will have more fun on the way, right? We also have this tendency to, if we're pushing it too much, we sometimes have the tendency to live in the future. We would say, okay, I will just spend this, let's say four years in university and I will just push it and then, or I will just work on this one job for let's say two or three years and then, no, don't do that. Don't live in the future, live in today, enjoy your life, Right, because that's just your one life. And so you can have success and enjoy the life. Okay, so, and also very important, aim to find a mentor. Finding a mentor, and obviously finding a good mentor that is a good mentor for you is difficult, but this can also really accelerate your career. Look for a person that you can look up to, that motivates you, see how this person achieved things, um, and if this person is agreeing to, to help you, to guide you along the way, and giving you a few tips now and then, this can really help me. I have several mentors helping me. I would not be nothing without the mentors that I can trust on, right? I'm, we are saying we're standing on the shoulders of giants. So I'm standing on the shoulder of giants. Without my mentors, I would be nothing. Okay, and this is also very important to me. One second. We have to invest time and money on ourselves. As developers, we are so lucky that we usually earn more money than we need. And if you are so lucky, then, well, I hear many developers telling me, I have this extra money, so I have invested this in stock options. Well, investing in stock, uh, stock options is cool. I'm also doing this, but maybe before you do that, consider if you want to invest some of this money on your own. Because I also hear developers saying, there's this one book, I would want to read it to accelerate my career, but my boss doesn't pay this for me, right? And the book might just be 20 or 40 euros. I mean, come on, you can buy that book on yourself. We are responsible for our careers. And even if you want to do a course, if you really want it, you can buy this course for yourself. If you want to go to Java 1 and the flight costs you, I don't know, 1,000 euros, the hotel costs another 1,000 euros or what, yes, if you really want, you can do that. I mean, if you really believe in yourself, right, why would you want to invest this kind of money in a different person's company and not in yourself? Yeah, think about this. And this is another important step that I had to learn. When we see another person that is successful, we see, okay, he's president or something. How did he ever make that? That is just impossible. I can never make that. How did he become the suc successful soccer player? I can never make that. How did he or she become this uh, very important person in sports? The thing is, compare that to code. When we write a program, we know every single line of a few thousand lines, right? And it's totally clear to us. When you see a program of someone else, it's usually magic to us, right? Oh, this magic, how does this work? I have no idea, magic. And the same, I think, is true for our careers or the careers of others that we see. 
When we see a successful person, it seems like magic. I can never do that. Yes, you can. Because it's just a few small, I mean, many million small steps. So every day we have to motivate ourselves and we have to just keep on doing this. And yes, you can achieve it if you really want it. And the next point is never give up. I mean, all these million steps only make sense if you don't give up. This is something that I really inhaled in myself. This was a book that I read from Chad Fowler many years ago. And he called this the pig-headed discipline. We have to have pig-headed discipline. Like a pig, we just have to follow a goal and we have to keep working on this and finally we can achieve it. And now I want to share also with you a few things that I learned in the just three months that I'm now with Red Hat. So Red Hat is the biggest open source company in the world. Red Hat is an awesome company and I'm really proud to work for Red Hat. So there's one thing that I want to share with you. Um, and that's obviously related to Java. So Java, um, the Java version 1.0 came out in 1996. So some of you might not have even have been born at the time, right? So this is long, long ago. So let's remember back, what was the time like? Well, at the time we had computers like this, so quite different, sexy, sexy, right? Monitors like this, chunky. A typical computer at the time would have had, for example, 133 megahertz and let's say eight to 32 megabytes of RAM, so no giga there. Today in our pockets with our smartphones, we have computers that are a multitude faster than these computers at the time. And this is important to understand, to understand how Java was built, the strategy that Java follows. And that still is the same thing. Java was optimized for long running processes, right? So at the time, um, an application, at the time we didn't even have Agile, right? So we would develop an application in waterfall style model. We even didn't have testing, automated testing at the time. So we would work on an application over several months, sometimes even several years. And when it was finally, finally ready for production and we would pray that it was working because we didn't have automated tests, we would then release it on production and assuming it was running, we would just keep it running on production forever and ever and ever, right? Happy, happy, happy. And because of this, obviously it didn't matter how long a Java program would take to start up. If a Java program would start up in one second or 10 minutes, didn't matter as long as as soon as it was, uh, had started, it was running super, super, super fast. And it was, right? But today, things are very, very different. So today, we have very often a cloud environment. And on the one hand, right, we have gigabytes of RAM today. So it seems like everything is super, super simple. Actually, the opposite is true because also the requirements have changed. And actually memory has become very, very, very expensive because we're running in the cloud and we cannot share the memory. We can share the CPU easily, but even if we can share the memory, we don't want to share the memory because obviously we don't want one application to see what the other application sees and to interfere, right? And with Java, if you have a JVM that starts up in a few minutes, and if you have a JVM that is large, that has a few hundred megabytes of RAM, and now you want to scale this up, especially in a serverless environment. In a serverless environment, um, when there is a spike in transactions, uh, in requests coming in, we would want to scale up, and then as soon as this is gone again, we would want to scale down so we can save money. But how can we scale down to zero if starting my JVM takes a few minutes? We, or even four seconds is too long. Because if there is a customer, we cannot tell the customer, please wait four seconds, starting up, starting up, starting up. So we cannot, with Java, so aggressively scale down. And this is why many companies have moved away from Java, unfortunately, and moved towards other languages like Go or Node, right? And we at Red Hat, 
well, we love Java, we have lots of Java applications. So, and many, many times in the past history, it was said Java is dead, right? Now again, you could say, well, Java is dead. It's not ready for the cloud. So we were looking, how can we change that? And this is how Quarkus was born. And as I said, this is one of the things that I was able to witness while I was joining Red Hat. It was just released in March. So this is super brand new. So now let me show you what is so great about Quarkus and how this can help us uh, to have Java again as a, uh, um, as a native in, in, the cloud, in a cloud native environment. Okay, so first of all here, we see we're comparing three different applications. In green, we have Quarkus running on GraalVM as a native executable. In yellow, we have Quarkus on OpenJDK on the hotspot VM. And in blue, we have a traditional cloud native stack. So what is a traditional cloud native stack? That could be an application, for example, running traditionally on Tomcat or Jetty or also Spring Boot, right? So these kinds of applications. And now if you look at two things, first of all, at the memory usage. And when I say memory usage, I mean memory RSS, here to the left. Because very often we speak of the heap size, but what really matters, and especially so in the cloud, is the entire memory that my process is using. Because that's what we pay for in the cloud, right? And now with a traditional application, this can be quite big, right? So here we see we have 140 megabytes for just a simple REST application without any CRUD yet. And if we want to scale up to a 10 or even 100 containers, you can easily see how fast this just gets too big or too expensive in the cloud, which is why so many companies have moved away with Java, from Java. But now with Quarkus, there's two uh, modes. You can either run this as a native executable. You see it goes as low as 13 megabytes, but it is about 10 times less than the traditional cloud uh, stack. And same thing for a CRUD application, for example, running on, on, on JPA, uh, running with JPA. We see that Quarkus on GraalVM is as low, the memory usage is 35 megabytes, and compare that to 280 megabytes uh, yeah, for a traditional cloud native stack. So I think these numbers are really, really mind-blowing, at least to me. When I saw this the first time, I was like, wow, this is Java. This is really what Java can do. It's unbelievable. And the same thing applies to the first response time. That's what I told you before, that in a very dynamic environment, like in a serverless uh, environment, four seconds is just not fast enough. Right? And with Quarkus running as a native executable, we go as low as just 14 milliseconds. And this is really comparable to something like, like um, Go or Node. And same thing, like if we have Quarkus on OpenJDK, it's still 75 milliseconds only. And here it depends on your requirements, right? I mean, if you see these numbers, you might say, okay, this means we should always go for a native executable. No, it depends. Because a native executable running on GraalVM has some restrictions. And now the question is, are you ready for that? Do you need the dynamic environment of a JVM? In this case, um, using Quarkus with the OpenJDK is, is a perfectly fine, nice solution, right? Because everything has advantages and disadvantages, obviously, right? And this is here the first response time. But the thing is, as soon as the hotspot VM has heated up in an environment where you would uh, use this for a longer time, and you give the JVM enough time that it uh, uh, heats up, it will even be faster on the hotspot VM than compared to a native executable, right? So this depends. Are you running in a serverless environment? Do you need this extra uh, uh, power? You can, but you don't have to. Both options are, are really good first-class options in the cloud. Okay. So, now the question remains, how does this actually work? So, first of all, we start just creating simple class files, okay? And then our Quarkus plugin comes into play. 
Now the question is, um, do you prefer to use Maven or Gradle? I usually prefer Maven, but that's up to you. We have a Quarkus plugin for both of them, and this Gradle, uh, the, sorry, this Quarkus plugin will then create an optimized jar. So what is that? How is this working? Well, at Red Hat, we have obviously a lot of experience with application servers. Now let's remember, let's think about how does actually, what does an application server do once we have our jar or war and we, we load this into the application server, right? So what happens at this time is in your jar or war file, there will be, for example, XML files, there will be uh, JSON files, for example, there will be annotations, and all of this has to be parsed. A, this takes time, and B, to parse this, to process this, you will generally need also, again, classes that have to be loaded into memory, which again takes time, but it also takes memory, right? And the problem here is also that this will be loaded into the memory and it will always stay in the memory. So it's just a waste of memory. So what we do now instead is we do this process up front before the application server is started. And we create something like a um, recording or caching file. And this caching as a jar, we can then directly load as bytecode into the JVM. And this is how this is A faster and B smaller, right? And this step yet has nothing to do with GraalVM. Now, if you're fine with that, we're done. But if you want to go one step further, yes, you can. Then we can create, with the help of the Quarkus plugin, in just a very simple command, by just, uh, uh, for example, in the case of a Maven plugin, we just have a profile native, and this will create a native executable for you on the fly. You can, if you want to, do the same thing without uh, a Quarkus because we're just, in this case, just using GraalVM, but it's not such an easy process because for GraalVM it has some uh, um, requirements. You have to register, for example, all kinds of reflect reflective usage, and if you use reflection a lot, which we typically do when we use some, some frameworks, then you have to register all kinds of these uh, usages, and this can be a file a few hundred lines long. This can be a tedious process, right? And this is all done for you with Quarkus. Okay, so now, however, there's more. Because so far, I was mostly speaking just how does this work on production. I guess this is cool, but for us as developers, I mean, we're not spending our time usually on production. We're usually spending our time developing, right? So it should also be fun to use Quarkus in our daily lives. And for this, Quarkus has many cool things. The coolest probably is the uh, Quarkus developer mode. And this I want to show you right now. So the Quarkus developer mode allows us to um, run your application and then to apply changes on the fly. There have been other tools that would have done the same thing in the past, but the difference is here we don't do a hot replacement because Quarkus is so fast, we just, whenever you have a change, we will just restart the whole server again, which means we can even create and add new classes. Okay, so, and now, I, if you have a notebook ready, for example you, or also on your smartphones, I would invite you to go to this website here, quarkus.io. I think this is also another nice feature. I really like this documentation because it's really easy to follow, and I will just do the same thing right now. So have, let's have a look. Oh, this is a bit too early, sorry. Uh, so we're going here, quarkus.io. Oh shit. Uh, server not found. Uh, okay, I don't have internet. That is bad. Does this work? Let me open a connection. No, wait, wait, I, I do something else. I open my own hotspot. This might be easier. Yes, okay. Okay. No. Uh, 
So maybe you give me the connection details. Which one should I take, JVC and conf? Okay, so finally, sorry, thanks. Okay, so you see here, get started. So let's click here. So it tells me I need an IDE, okay, I have an IDE, I need JDK 8 or, or more, okay, have that. I need Maven, okay, have that, and Gradle, cool. So create your first application, read the guide. So let's go there. Okay, we will go a bit quicker. So here, you would obviously read this more slower. And in these boxes, you have always these commands. You can just copy them, put them to your terminal, execute them. And this is, I think, quite easy and fun. So let's do this now. OK, so this has worked. I hope you can see it. So what did we do? Oh. CD getting started. Okay, so now here I have a first Maven project. As I said, I really like Maven, but we have the same thing for Gradle also. So let's open this. Okay, this will take a while. Now someone tries to chat with me. Okay, so now let's have a look at this project. Okay, so what do we have here? We have a bomb. So this helps us that we directly get the right versions. So here we have REST Easy. Um, this will give us a subset of CDI and JXRS. We, here we have JUnit 5, but you can also use JUnit 4. We also support that, uh, whatever you prefer. Here's REST Assured. This is not directly related to Quarkus. And here's the Maven uh, Quarkus plugin. Here's the native profile. As I said, you can use that and directly create a native executable. Today we will not have the time to do this, but as I said, I mean the main purpose here is to invite you to go to this documentation and try this out by yourself. I mean, what does it help you if I do this for you? I want you to do this and to try this out yourself. But let's see what more do we have here, source main docker. We have two Docker files already. So this is the two modes that I told you about, one for the uh, uh, JDK and one second Docker file for the native executable. So this is all there to be used. And this created also here a greeting resource, okay? So this will create hello. Let's start this in a second. And we also believe a lot in tests. So here we have two integration tests with a Quarkus annotation. This will allow you to start the application server and then you can run tests against this. And we have one test uh, for, the na uh, for the JVM mode and we have also a test for the native mode, okay? And now let's try to run this. So or maybe I do this on the console, maybe this is easier to read. So there is no magic so far. Maven clean package. And this takes a while, as you can see. But I guess it's not too bad. So let's, or, wait. Okay, so here we see what do we have. <coughs> we have a runner file. We have also a lib folder, so we created this um, so to optimize this really for, for Docker files so that when you have a change in your business logic, um, I mean, this is way often more happening than that you have a change in, in your libraries. So this will then create a, a, a distinctive layers, and so this is faster, right? So, okay, so, and we can, we can start this. There is no magic. Java minus jar getting started runner jar 
Yes, thank you. And it started in 0.4 seconds. I guess that's already cool. But as I said, with a native mode, that would even be faster. But let's have a look. Localhost 8080. And I think the URL was hello. So let me make this larger. Hello. Okay, it's working. <coughs> now let's play around a bit. We're in Spain, so let's say hola. So what do I have to do? Stop the application server, change my code, compile everything again. So I can use some Twitter. I can surf around on the web while the, my tests are running, right? Happy, happy. Well, unfortunately, with Quarkus, we don't have this time anymore because we have the Quarkus developer mode. And with this, things would be so much faster. So let's also be, see this. So now, I would just say maven compile and Quarkus colon dev. And I get a build failure uh, because I'm in the target folder, obviously. Okay. So let's do it again. And this time it started a bit slower, but I'm now in the developer mode. So this would probably obviously not be running on production. This is just for you on your daily work so that your daily work gets more fun and faster. Unfortunately, less time for Twitter. So let's see now. So now I'm in your greeting resource. Let's first of all, before I do any changes, see if it's still running. Yes, hello. And now let's change this. Hola. JVCN. 2019, right? And let me just refresh this. And there we are. And this is one of the cool things of Quarkus, besides all the other cool things, you know, native mode and, and really starting fast, that I think are really cool. And with this, I would want to thank you. Uh, now we still have enough time for questions, so you're invited to have some questions. So the startup time is very fast, uh, but with the uh, Hello World application from Spring, with Spring Boot, it's uh, two seconds, also not so so big. And in my monolith project, it it's uh, one minute. And uh, <laughs> you know that uh, with a small application, it's always fast. Maybe not so fast because uh, it's impressive, but uh, of, for sure you tested it for bigger, bigger, larger applications. So yes. how is the startup startup time for a really big application? Okay, so, I mean, I have not started it for like an application that would be like hundred thousand of lines of code. I mean, at the moment we are on version, I think, I mean, there's a new version every two weeks or so. So uh, my last update that I had was from version 0.15, uh, right? So this is brand new. So there are just no so huge application at the moment, but definitely, I mean, you're right. There are differences. This is what I tried to show here. Um, is it here? And I mean, this was a short version of the talk. I, I also have a different version of the talk where I show this in detail with REST and CRUD. So we can also create a complex uh, application with CRUD and this will still be comparable, comparable and still really, really fast. Okay? Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah. So to, to this uh, page, you are, sh you are showing us that using Quarkus, actually we are winning with the time, we are winning with this death, death mode and so on. So what are we losing? Where, where is the hatch? Well, what you is tell the disadvantage? me. <laughs> um, well, I could now say <laughs> funny that you might lose some time to surf Twitter, right? At the moment, I don't see what you would be losing. I mean, I think this is a big win. And if you, I mean, it's just out there for like two months or so. And if you look on the internet, Quarkus is at the moment everywhere because I think it is really awesome. Now time will obviously show like 
how this is proceeding, but at the moment more and more projects are also jumping on this and, and, and more and more people want to use this, want to also extend this. So at the moment I'm very optimistic and I think this also like re -univates, is that the right word? The whole Java ecosystem also. Now other competitors also start to really see like also what GraalVM can do to us. And I think this really helps to uh, um, that we have Java for the next, I don't know, 10, 20, 100 years, right? Because this changes everything for Java, I think. Okay, thanks. Hi, so I wanted to ask something more about the first part of your talk. Okay. Um, yeah. So it's great to find a mentor. It's not easy, but also it's not impossible. If you ask someone, it's very hard for someone to be like, no, I'll never help you. Um, but what are sort of things in practice that you seek help from your mentors about? So the question was how my mentors can help me, right? I guess maybe you can find someone who's willing to be your mentor, but then what are the actual things that you go and ask them about? Well, it depends. Like, sometimes it's small things. Like, what do you think? What's your opinion? Should I do this? Should I not? And yeah, this is personal and, and it's always different. So, I mean, this really depends on you. What, you, what kind of, where are you at, the, at, at your point? Um, where are you stocking? Uh, like, wh where are you blocked? Is that the word? And can this person help you? I mean, this is also obviously about trust. Do you trust this person to share this uh, kind of information with this person? So you have to find a person that you really trust and that you can trust, obviously, right? Because you have to show a lot of your weaknesses, obviously, because you would say, I have a problem here. What do you think? Um, can you help me? What's your opinion? That might sometimes just be, you know, she or he recommends you a book. Or it might be, speak to that person. Yeah, for example, that was an advice that I got. Uh, I had a question, and uh, this mentor told me, you know, I know there's the one person, this is the right person to talk to, talk to this person, and I did, and it was really helping me, okay? So it's not magic, right? It's just small things, but it's helping. These small things are helping us, right? Okay. And they can also motivate you. I think that's also important because they would follow your career and they would say, hey, wow, look at you, what you have achieved, right? And you are like in this uh, conversation. And you're, you're not alone anymore. Hi. Um, so um, you said that uh, <coughs> you try to improve your life. So um, you are working, I don't know, eight, nine hours per day. Then you spend some couple of hours or one hour to catch up with technologies every day, to c another hour maybe to catch up with uh, networks and things like this. Later you go to the gym, uh, another hour. Then you help a little bit at home. And now. Uh, suddenly you have your your child uh, <clears throat> where you want to probably spend a couple of hours more per day to 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 spend time with with hi with him and with your family um how do you deal with all this plus starting a new job uh, with a new company where you also have to travel where you also have to invest and show commitment and uh, still you want to spend time with your family yes what where do you get the time or how do you do, how are do you how are you dealing with this situation right now okay well at the moment especially at the moment in my life it's really yes it's challenging um but again there is the same i think kind of the same answer it's not always the big things it's very often also small things uh also heinz kabutz had has made this this challenge i think last year where he said you know run a mile every every day that's one of the things for example that you can do because you might not every day have the time to work out one, two, three hours, right? But running a mile every day, how long does this take you? Maybe 10 minutes if you're slow, maybe 20 minutes, maybe even 30 minutes or what, but this kind of time everyone has. For, for me personally, for example, uh, yes, uh, I'm, I'm here, then I will travel to the next conference and the next conference and so on, and yes, there's still my family on top. So uh, today I did not have the time to go to the gym, not at all. But uh, like yesterday, for example, I had, and it was not an hour, but yesterday it was, for example, I think 20, 30 minutes. So 
at least if you have this, this, uh, uh, this openness that you don't have excuses, I don't have time, but you just do it, right? And if it's just five minutes, then five minutes is better than nothing. This is the start, I think. And if you're open to that, and if you integrate that in your life, and not just, you know, I have to do this, you start to enjoy this, and you want to do it. If you want to do it, you will find time, and you will enjoy it, right? So uh, this, uh, we're never working 24-7. There's always time. It, it's about decisions, right? Do you want to now use the time to serve Twitter, or do you want to use this time to work on your body? It's your decision, and you can make it. Okay, so then thanks. Thanks for listening. Thanks for having me here. Great honor.